that's what I did. I decided one night after the baby was down, I started creating a logo, which looking back, it was so dorky. But that's where we started, a logo and a Facebook page. And... <laughs> Welcome to Business Brief, where we indulge in bite-sized business and legal tips just to level up your business. I am so excited today because I have the most wonderful and very talented baker, chef, cookie maker, potato pops owner, Courtney Sanchez. She is our guest today, and I am just so happy to have her here and talk all things about a bakery and how to make those amazing cookies and alongside getting some bite-sized business tips. So welcome, Courtney. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yes, I am so excited. So I had the chance to go on, I mean, I always, you know, do a little bit of research on all my guests. So that way I kind of know what I'm talking about also, but I, <laughs> I just, I'm so amazed by the websites that all my guests have. And then all the unique qualities that those websites have, especially yours, has the most beautiful images of your production oh. <laughs> and your designs. Your cakes are phenomenal. I saw a Lego cake on there. And I was like, gosh, I wish I knew her when oh I goodness. had a Lego party <laughs> for my son's birthday. <laughs> and so, Thank you know, you. It's, it's pretty amazing what you do. I know I can't do it. So I think it's such a gift. And so tell us, what do you do? Give me in one sentence. What is your business and what does it do? <laughs> So I own Potato Pop in Humble, Texas, and I offer just top-notch custom treats, mostly cookies and cakes, but I really can branch out to just about anything that I can legally sell. I love that. And are you working out of a warehouse or are you working from your home or a bakery? Where are you working from? So I work under the Texas Cottage Food Law, which means that I am allowed to bake from my home. And I'm really fortunate to have a big space in the back of my home where I can work peacefully without my kids <laughs> yeah it looks pretty amazing I know we were talking about that right before we started and I'm like I mean it's legitimate you're yeah. legit obviously but it looks pretty darn like as if you're sitting in a commercial kitchen <laughs> and so yes I wish <laughs> one day we'll be commercial <laughs> but yeah Absolutely. right now I, I wanted to make sure that I had the space and it works yeah and so tell me how did you start your business so my business started almost out of necessity I had left my retail management job when I had my first son just to stay home with him and his first birthday was coming up and I thought gosh like we really didn't have the finances to buy all of that fun you know birthday cookies and cakes and I was like well I'm creative I can figure this out and that's where it started I just started researching how to make his cookies and it kind of wow. blew up from there yeah that's incredible because I feel like I'm creative but I cannot do what you do so did you have an inkling prior to that I know you were working in retail you said <laughs> yes. did you ever bake before that or dabble mm -hmm. in baking no never I've always been a really creative person I actually kind of hate saying that because it sounds so cheesy but I that's just what I do I've always been really creative and uh, I was walking around a farmer's market and I saw somebody else making those like decorated sugar cookies that were custom and I thought those are so pretty but I'd never done it and I just did what I like to do and I started researching it I really like to indulge myself in like YouTube videos and TikTok and whatever else there is out there and I just taught myself how to do it that's awesome I mean I I feel like that is truly a superpower within itself <laughs> and so when did you make it a business though when did it really truly become a business oh my goodness so I don't know that there was really like a defining point necessarily I started like posting my pictures on my own personal social media. And then it started with family members, you know, can we get some cookies for so-and-so or, you know, and I thought, gosh, this is really my opportunity. I missed having my own income <laughs> and I missed having like a purpose that was outside of being a mom. Mm. So I just decided, you know, I'm going to do this just for me. It was going to be really small at first, just so that I could get a little bit of, you know, my own money. If I wanted to take the baby out somewhere, I could. And that's, that's what I did. I decided one night after the baby was down, I started creating a logo, which looking back, it was so dorky, but that's where we started a logo and a Facebook page. And <laughs> Hey, that's um, I did where you start. Yeah. And then I realized that there's kind of a lot to being a home baker in Texas, not a lot, but you have to know what you're doing. I did some research and found out that 
you have to have a food handler's license. So I spent like a whole evening getting my food handler's license. It was really inexpensive, but it was a lot of good information. How do you do that? And How do you go for that? Oh, goodness. It was just a website. It was just like the Texas food handler's website. Okay. And as far as that goes, it was really easy. It was a couple hours, a couple videos you have to watch in a test. And then it's a two-year-long certification. Super easy. And then I found out that there was a website for the Texas food cottage law, like stipulations, what you can and what you cannot sell. Mm -hmm. And that really narrowed down what I was allowed to do. And there's a website for that too. It was super easy. Yeah. And I'll put them all in the notes as well. And I kind of wanted to talk to you about that a little bit, about the, you know, food cottage law. And I know Texas has one and most of the states have mm -hmm. their own laws yes. and they govern how you can start an in-home you know, food business, whether you're a baker, whether you're creating pasta or other types of food as well. Right. And so aside from the food handlers certification and, you know, reading about what you could or could not actually sell out of your home, what were some other compliance aspects that you had to do in order to start your business at home? So it's pretty easy. I am not allowed to sell anything that has to be refrigerated. And that that's kind of the basics. If it's going to be unsafe being outside of a refrigerator or the temperature control, you know, if the temperature has to be controlled on that food item, then I can't sell it. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really important for me to figure out because you know, a lot of people, they want cheesecakes or they want pumpkin pies and things like that. And I can't sell it legally. And it was important to me to follow those guidelines so that my business could get as big as I wanted it to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So cake is not temperature controlled? Not technically, no. It can sit out. A lot of bakeries do. Once they bake the cake and start assembling, it can sit out for a couple of days. I mean, it might not taste great, but it's not going to kill anybody. So. <laughs> awesome. Did you need any other types of licenses or permits also? No, not at all. Not at all. And I think that's why, especially in Texas, it was such a good opportunity to start this business from home. I didn't need much. As long as I was following those few rules, you know, I could really expand my business. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. I think, you know, a lot of us start our businesses at home because that's just the easy yes. spot to start in and it's quick. You don't have to like literally spend money to have a location outside of your home. Right. And so I think this is wonderful because a lot of times we don't know and it's always scary, like, oh, my goodness, do I need this? Do I need that? So what were some other things that you needed to get, though, in order to make your business a little safer for yourself and protection wise for yourself as well and as well for your clients? Is there anything else that you you know, purchased or made sure that you had? So I do have to label all of my products um, for like allergies. And I have to make sure every customer knows that my kitchen is not inspected by the state. Um, so oh. that's also you know, safe for everybody. The allergens is a big thing. Mm -hmm. I also made sure that I have just a short contract. Every time that a customer pays my invoice, they have a contract that, you know, kind of protects them and protects me to make sure that everybody's going to, you know, end our deal with satisfaction. Gosh, I love that. I didn't even think about that. But yes, you're right. Even at home, you need a contract. <laughs> yes. It's not crazy. <laughs> but yes, you know, it's I just something. want to make sure that they understand they're paying me and you're getting something. Yeah, it's absolutely something. So I know that when you started the business, you were saying that you needed that extra, uh, you know, financial funnel into your life. But outside yes. of that, when you started your how long have you been in your bakery business? Um, about three years. Three years. So while you've been evolving in your business and growing in your business, what are some other problems that you're solving as you serve your community and your clients? That's a funny question. When I thought about this last night, I was like, well, they want cake and I'm, I'm providing cake. <laughs> but really, um, I they think want that my business, sweets. <laughs> yeah, they want sweets. <laughs> Here's your stuff. I think I think that my business right now is really unique because I am able to offer that personalized attention to their, especially for wedding cakes. I mean, mm. I'm not a big box. I don't have employees right now. So when you're talking to me about your wedding cake or your special event, I'm the one who's going to be touching it. I'm the one who's going to be creating it. And I think that's really unique in some aspects because you're not just getting, you know, 
somebody jotting on a piece of paper, okay, they want a white cake with some lace and they're going to put some flowers on top. You know? yeah. This is me. I get to know you. I get to know your fiance and your family and tell me about your venue and your dreams. And I try to make sure that their event, you know, comes together with, with my treat tables. Gosh, I love that because truly, especially, you know, weddings and all, you get into the whole hoopla and sometimes you get lost yes. in the middle of all of that. And so when you yes. first started and you made your first cake, like when you baked your first cake, was it as spectacular as all the photographs on your website or were you like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? <laughs> that depends on which story you want. <laughs> So the first cake I ever made was my son's first birthday cake. And my mom will attest, I cried myself to sleep. I cried myself to sleep. Like, That's the ugliest cake I've ever seen. I thought I could do it. So because of that situation, I did not offer cakes for two years. I was like, I can't do them because I don't, I'm never going to offer a product that I don't know that I can send out the door at a hundred percent, you know, of my ability. Yeah. To, I want people to be happy with what they're paying. They're paying me a lot of money. They, they deserve to have a nice cake. So I spent, you know, many months talking with friends and my peers and figuring out what I was doing wrong. And the first cake that I actually sent out the door was, it was a little farm cake. It was so cute, but I did, I put everything I had into that little farm cake <laughs> with the little animal holes in the little fence and you know it was cute I've definitely seen progress since then but but yeah it, it was cute I like that you said that because I feel like you know sometimes a lot of us start something and we fail miserably like and I use the word fail very loosely because honestly I don't believe in failures per se I just feel like they're moments where you can grow and learn from but we're looking at it and we're like this was a disaster and yes. you feel really bad <laughs> about yourself too and it might even, you know, that noise might start in the back of the head saying, you're not good enough, or you can't do this again, or you're not doing a good oh, job yeah. for your customers. Or even like, I wonder what they're thinking. Oh, my, they must think mm -hmm. I'm just really bad at what I do. So two years later, how did you pick yourself up again and get the courage to, you know, bake that cake and sell it? Like, what happened in those two years that changed? So... <laughs> The more comfortable I got with sugar cookies, right? I can do them in my sleep now. It is time to expand. And I have a really good a good friend. She's a baker a few miles down the road. And she was like, you need to offer cakes. You have to do this. And I was like, okay. So she helped me. You know, she, I would literally send her videos of me icing a cake. And she'd say, that looks great. Now scrape it off and do it again. <laughs> you know, like one of those friends. <laughs> And yeah, you know, I did my research, I made sure I had the packaging and, you know, I tested recipes. And once all that was good, I was ready to go. I am one of those people that I need a little push. So I just started accepting orders. Yeah, I can make that cake for you next month. And then it was like, okay, I better research and figure out how to do this. You know? Yeah. And, uh, it, it's been really exciting. It's really taken off. So did you make prototypes before you made the final cake in the beginning? <laughs> No, no, I know you probably think I'm crazy, but I would no, just start early. All. I had all my friends on speed dial in case I needed help and I just dive in and, you know, as far as the creative process goes, once I understand what I need to do, I'm really good at troubleshooting mm -hmm. and uh, it just, it falls into place. Yeah. And I want to highlight something that you mentioned about calling up your baker friend. And then having your oh, yes. friends on speed dial, it's so essential to have people that can give you that encouragement, that can give you that push, yes. and that you can also lean into and get help. I mean, I think it's incredible that you have a baker friend who didn't feel threatened by you and was actually oh, no. a mentor <laughs> to you. I, I mean, that's beautiful. And we need to have more of those friendships. And we need to be more of those people to others as well. Yes, yes. I think that's really important. One of the big things I see like on social media I'm on there a lot, if you can't tell. I see a lot of new bakers that are like, oh my goodness, like somebody's opening a baking business like in the next block over or Sam's selling cookies for, you know, half what I sell them for. And it's like, that's that's not what it's about. Yeah. You know, you, you focus in on, on your business and then you find your community and there's enough customers to go around. Yes. So we've been, tra we've been driving a lot. Like we went for the, the holidays. We like, you know, drove to Colorado from Texas, which is, I kid oh, you wow. not, it felt like a, like a full one day trip. Like it was so long. <laughs> <laughs> That's forever. <laughs> it was 
lovely though. I actually enjoyed going the back roads of the U.S. I think they're beautiful. You also realize though, there's so many small towns. There's so yes. many people. They're places that we've never explored or seen before. And they could need our services. There could be a party happening in a small town and they need some good cookies and they don't want to get yes. typical cookies that you get maybe from Walmart or Sam's. They want something unique and something for them. Right. And that's where you come in, right? Because Humble's a pretty small town too. Um, but it's lovely that you're able to provide that to your community in that space. Yeah. I just really think that making that that community over like competition is so important. Yeah. I mean, I have so many like baking friends that have gotten me out of a tight spot or, you know, we've split the cost of packaging or, you know, we send customers to each other and it's, it's just so important to, to help your business grow. Yeah. To, to realize that you're not in this alone. You know, there's a lot of you around. How did you make those connections? You know, being at home can be isolating also. I don't yes. know if you went to conferences or what, but how did you make those connections to increase your baking community and network? So as far as my baking community, I really started by just joining like local baking Facebook groups. I met other bakers like at farmers markets or, you know, small events like that. And then for my wedding networking, I actually joined the AWP, it's the um, Association of Wedding Planners, I asked to be one of their vendors. And so I go to their conferences and I, I network there to meet some planners and things like that. Awesome. That is so awesome. So we are about to, you know, close up our conversation. However, before we do that, I would like to know what is one of the biggest challenges that you had since you have you know, actually not even since you've started your business, but even prior to that. And how did you overcome it? Um, well, one would be motherhood. As you can probably hear my toddler knocking on my door. <laughs> so I work from home and I, I have to balance those kiddos. But outside of my home, um, I would say the biggest issue more recently would be like inflation, my ingredient mm -hmm. costs. Everybody is concerned about that. And I think it's been really important to just understand that you know, that cost my $25 a case for eggs, you know, that has to transfer to the customer in order to continue to be successful. And I have to be confident enough to to pass those costs along to the right person. Right. And how do you communicate that to your clients? You know, I kind of take the approach of just, I'm not chatty about it. You know, they ask me for a cake and I say, okay, I can do that. And I quickly figure out my costs. I know my ingredients. I know my recipes. And this is what I need to charge you. So if you'd like that cake, it'll be this much. Okay. And, you know, take it or leave it kind of thing. Yeah. And I like that you said I'm not chatty about it. Sometimes we become chatty about our prices because we're ourselves not comfortable. Yes. And confident in it. And I say it with absolute experience on my end, by the way. And so <laughs> <laughs> I just like how you're like, this is how much it is. Yeah, and I mean, if I go no to Costco, they're not like, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, you could give an explanation of the services you're providing. But uh, outside of that, you know, the back end of it, I like that. I think that's, a grand, that's my takeaway right now, aside from all the other things. <laughs> but I love that. That's awesome. Well, you know, before we say bye, I like to ask a couple questions that are kind of, you know, similar in all of my conversations. One is, what is your superpower? Oh, Oh, my superpower is multitasking. I can bake and decorate a cake with two toddlers on my legs. Love it. I also heard a few other superpowers <laughs> in there too while we were talking, such as troubleshooting <laughs> and such as really quickly adapting and learning and implementing. You. I, you know, there's a lot of things that I heard today while I was talking to you. Now, when you are faced with challenges or it's just really chaotic around you, what is your anchor? What holds you steady? Goodness, that's a great question. I really love to focus on just like, I can do this. You know, there's nothing outside of what I can do. Um, as far as my business goes, I'm confident. And I know that if I just stay the course and, and stay my processes, then my work is going to get done. Nice. I love that. Thank <laughs> you. You know, it's so lovely talking to you because you exude so much confidence. And oh, thank you. No, you do. And it's really nice to have that energy around me and I'm sure other people enjoy the energy too because you know your story is very cool because you started from not having any type of 
education or no. <laughs> in baking or cooking or culinary, you know, whatever. And <laughs> it just shows that there's so many skills that we have in ourselves that we haven't tapped into. Yes. And then we just shouldn't be scared. Just do it. And even after two years, you can still bake that cake and sell it. Yes. And, you know, you're rocking. Like if, and I have your, I'm going to be putting your, you know, website into the show notes as well. But how can people see your amazing creations? Like where can we connect with you? Oh my goodness. So if you want to chat, I'm on all social media platforms. Facebook is Potato Pop. Instagram, Potato Pop. I have a website, potatopop.com. If you want to follow me on TikTok, you can. They're not great, but <laughs> I'm on TikTok as well. Um, I'd love to chat. I would love for you to join my email list. I send out some blasts once in a while when I've got fun things happening. Yeah, that, that's where I am. Okay, I well, always have my phone on me. So if you want to send me a message and say hi. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Well, I'm going to put, not your phone number, but I'm going to put everything no. else <laughs> into the show notes so everyone can contact you and connect with you. And do you, by any chance, deliver outside of Humble or do you do cross-state delivery right now or not yet? So right now, under the Texas Cottage Law, I have to work in the state, but I do deliver. Um, I Just last weekend, I did a wedding down in Alvin. And um, that's, you know, not too far, but it's about an hour and a half from here. So I can deliver. Okay. So if you're in the Texas area, then definitely we can reach out to you, make an order yes. and have it delivered. That is so fantastic. Oh, yes. That is so fantastic. Yeah, especially more recently. I've been doing weddings all over the area. I would love to help anybody who's looking for a cake. Oh, I'm sure there's so many people out there <laughs> that want their you know, their wedding cakes and birthday cakes and all these other cookies. Like I'm definitely going to be tapping into oh, your yes. services for my children's <laughs> birthdays. I think truly, I just love all the work that you've created. It's, it's really gorgeous. And tell me a little bit about the name, Potato Pop, before we say bye. I love it. Sure. So my oldest son's middle name is Mateo. He was born on the 3rd of July. So we used to sing a silly song to him, calling him a firework, basically. So we, we called him Potato Pop. And I thought, well, I'm making cookies for his birthday. Like that was my inspiration. So that was my yeah. business name. So fantastic. Well, thank yeah, don't you make so me sing the song. But no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being with us today. I truly am walking away with so many gems of wisdom and knowledge. And I'm looking forward to actually placing my order with you soon. <laughs> great. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. 